Thank you. Thank you very much. I know you must be tired after your performance. Yes, ma'am, I am. Uh, you're my favorite comedian, and I wouldn't want to go back home without your picture. <laughs> Just say to buy. That's short for Violet. Violet? That's a very sweet name. Violet Finsterwald. <laughs> <laughs> I'm visiting in New York with my husband, Courtney. He's waiting outside. I wanted him to come in with me, but he wouldn't. No? <laughs> what, is he bashful or something? Oh, no. He just doesn't like you. <laughs> <coughs> oh, well, he, you can't please everybody. <laughs> oh, Courtney's very strong-minded. But I can't complain. He's a good provider. And he'll eat almost anything you put in front of him. I had a dog like that once. <laughs> Thank you. I'll have this framed the minute I get home. Now look, Miss Fenstall, I don't want to cause any trouble in your household. If your husband doesn't like me, isn't he going to be annoyed if you hang that picture in your home? Oh, no. Courtney said if I got a picture, he'd know exactly where to put it. <laughs> Hello. As long as you like me. Oh, I do. I do. Thank you. Especially in that, uh, the way you do that act uh, about the man in the restaurant. Well, oh. thank you. I'm glad you like it. You're so natural. Well, thank you. I, I've been identified with that routine for years. As a matter of fact, I practically made it up. Well, no wonder you do it so much better than that, that Frank Farmer down at the High High. Club. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It, it was very nice meeting you. Not and if you ever come to Hammond, Indiana, oh, yes. come and see us. I sure I will. mean that. No, thank I you, mean thank it. You. I know you Bye do. bye. Well, <laughs> what are you doing? Just waiting to see how long it takes for the bomb to go off. <laughs> bomb to go off. Are you silly or something? Why should a bomb go off for him? Frank Farmer is doing my restaurant routine in the High High Club. <laughs> 20 seconds, a new American record. Let's see the Russians beat that. The nerve of that guy doing a routine that's identified with me. Maybe it's a new kid just breaking in. Even so, you ought to know it belongs to me. Everybody in show business knows that routine belongs to me. You know anything about this high, high club? Yeah, it's a little joint out in Flatbush. What kind of a place is it? It's sort of a large ashtray with a bartender. <laughs> you have a late show out there? Yeah, about 2 o'clock in the morning. That late? Sort of a kiddie matinee for bottle babies. <laughs> well, get your bib on, kid. You mean we're going? Let me kiss your bald head we're going. Nobody's gonna steal my material, kid. I've been doing that routine for so many years, I don't remember who I stole it from. Come on. <laughs> And now I want to thank you for the respectful silence with which you greeted my jokes. But now for an encore, I'll go back to my dressing room and cut my throat. <laughs> Shall we go back and help him with his encore? <laughs> oh, I feel miserable. I never knew that material could go that far in the ground. It was pathetic. An old timer like that ought to know better. What I can't understand is why Farmer Jones would want to change his act. Farmer Jones? I thought his name was Frank Farmer. Do you know him? Oh, I know him. He's one of the greatest comics in burlesque. He's changed his name. With that act, I can't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> Farmer Jones was the greatest knockabout comic that burlesque ever had. He never did monology. He never did straight jokes. Matter of fact, he rarely ever spoke on the stage. He used to kill the audiences. It's all wrong for him. This is terrible. I feel awful. Why should you feel awful? He swiped your routine, didn't he? It's the funny part of it. He doesn't have to swipe anything from me. He can have anything I've got. All he's got to do is ask. What? I don't think I ever told you this, but when I first started in this business, I got a job in burlesque. It was my very first job. I wouldn't have held it for a day, not for one day, if it wasn't for the farmer. The boss didn't like me at all. The farmer came up and he said, the kid will be all right, give him a chance. Just I'll use him in that slow motion fight routine of mine. And he did, and it went over pretty good, and they kept me on for about three months. Then he used to take me out and buy me coffee, and tried to teach me things about show business. He was like a father to me. 
Well, maybe he figures that if he can't steal from his own son, who can he steal from? <laughs> but pay the check and get out. Too late. Here he comes now. Well, hiya, farmer. Hi. Sit down and have a drink. You're forgiven. Forgiven? Forgiven for what? For stealing my restaurant routine. But it doesn't matter. Sit down. Have a drink. Let me get this straight, kid. Are you going to sit there and tell me that you own the restaurant routine? Oh, now you're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. You're kidding. Oh, you're kidding. To settle the argument, I'm kidding. <laughs> I got big news for you, Buster. That story was being told 30 years ago in burlesque by a guy named Bo Weevil Matthews. So that's the guy you stole it from. <laughs> What's he beefing about? Don't ask me. I'm waiting for the bus to Yonkers. <laughs> Look, farmer, for your information, I never saw Bo Weevil Matthews in my whole life. And 30 years ago, I was a punk kid in grammar school. Look, I'm not claiming that I wrote that routine, but I did nurse it along. I kept it alive, and I worked on it till it became famous with me, and you ought to know that. I didn't come here to argue with you. It's okay with me if you use your routine. I'm letting you use it. What do you mean, you're letting me use it? It's just what I said, farmer. You have my permission to use it. Now, forget it. Thanks for nothing. Who needs your permission? Wait a minute. I don't understand your attitude at all. What the sense of getting nasty? I could stop you, you know. Yeah? Sure, I could go to the guild. Go on, they laugh right in your nose. <laughs> Wait a minute. I came here tonight to stop some newcomer from stealing my material. But when I found out it was you, naturally it was okay with me, because you're an old pal. But when you're going to start hitting me with clever remarks like they're going to laugh in my nose, let's see how hard you laugh when my lawyer slaps a summons in your face. Come on, Minnie. Go ahead. I dare you. Take it to the Supreme Court. We may go higher than that. We may take it to the president. Come on. If we even go higher than that, we'll take it to Arthur Godfrey. Come on! Yeah, yeah, you heard right, Jesse. The lawyer's coming over right now. I know it's 4 o'clock in the morning, but he's still coming over. I'm slapping an injunction on this guy the first thing in the morning. Well, I may be silly to you, kid, but to me, it's a matter of principle. Look, when I need your advice, I'll call you. I did call you? <laughs> I made a mistake. Go back to bed. <laughs> Sweetheart, what are you doing up in the wee hours of the morning? With all that screaming, who can sleep? Holy smokes, Daddy, do you have to talk that loud? <laughs> Look, uh, don't start with me, huh? I pay the rent for this apartment. I also pay for the use of that telephone. If I want to scream once in a while, it's my privilege. If you're going to yell that loud, why do you need a telephone? <laughs> <laughs> One thing I don't need right now is wise cracks from you. I'm a growing boy. Losing sleep like this could warp my whole personality. Where did you ever get a stupid idea like that? You told it to me. <laughs> Look, Daddy, why don't you go to bed? I can't. I gotta wait for the lawyer to come. Lawyer? You mean the neighbors are gonna sue you for waking him up? <laughs> Look, uh, Shipley, I... What I want to know is, uh... How am I going to go about stopping this guy? Uh, now, when you say this guy, I'm assuming you refer to Mr. Uh, Frank Farmer, also known as Farmer Jones. Yeah, that's the fellow. He works at the High High Club. It's a little spot. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, excuse me. Now, a High High. Is that spelled H-I-G-H High, or is it H-I High? <laughs> both. Both. H-I High, H-I-G-H High, K-L-U-B Club, High High Club. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me if I seem a little unfamiliar with these theatrical terms, Mr. Williams. Well, you see, the fact of the matter is I happen to be a... Uh, well, I happen to be a, a corporation lawyer. No, well, don't mind me, Mr. Shipley. I'm just a little upset right now. Yes, I can see that. That's one thing I like about corporations. <laughs> corporations never get upset. <laughs> Only the ones I buy stock in. <laughs> uh, I didn't get that. I say only the ones I buy stock in. <laughs> you said corporations never get upset, and I said only the ones I buy stock in. <laughs> it's a joke, you... <laughs> yes, of course. 
course, I see. I beg your pardon. I, I just wasn't expecting it. <laughs> now, where were we? Oh, well, you were, but I was up the creek there for a minute. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Why don't we just forget the whole thing, huh? Well, I mean, I'm perfectly willing to laugh if I just knew when. <laughs> Can you go on with this now? Yes, please, let's do. Uh, now, let's see. Uh, yes, uh, you went to this club and you heard this party uh, using uh, a certain material which you claim is yours. I don't claim is mine, is mine. I worked it up through the years. This routine is identified with me. Everybody in show business knows it. Now, this guy comes along and steals something that belongs to me. That's against the law, right? Oh, right. So then I sue him, right? Oh, absolutely, Miss Stewart. Had a boy, had a boy. The boy has very little patience with thievery. Now you're talking. It's a real break to have a, have a legal mind like you four o'clock in the morning. Now, the first thing I do is slap an injunction on this guy, okay? Well, that, uh, I think that ought to be the first step, yes. Fine, fine. You don't know what a pleasure this is to communicate with such a brilliant legal mind like yours. Thank you. Then, after the injunction, we'll take steps to inflict the full weight of the law on the culprit. Mr. Shipley, it's plain to see you are a great lawyer. Oh, well, thank you. Now, uh, let me have a look at your, uh, your proof of ownership on the material in question. <laughs> what do you mean, proof of ownership? Oh, your copyright certificate or your bill of sale from the writer who sold you the material. Bill of sale? I don't have anything like that. Who needs it? Well, I'm afraid you do, Mr. Williams. Because if you don't have documented evidence of ownership, well, you don't have a case. Don't have a case? Are you sure you're a lawyer? <laughs> well, in my opinion, you have no legal right to this material at all. However, you're uh, perfectly free to consult Mr. Alexander when he returns. Look, I know what I'm free to do. That's not what worries me. What does worry me is that a man is licensed by the United States government to practice and interpret the law. And that self-same man has just denied that I have the protection that every citizen has, is entitled to. Let me ask you something, Mr. Shipley. Are you in favor of our American way of life, or are you boring from within? It's <laughs> another thing I like about corporations. They never become emotional. <laughs> Laws are made for the protection of human beings, of which I am one. And if you don't believe me, I have the bill of sale from the hospital to prove it. Well, I'm afraid I'd have to see that first. <laughs> well, in that case, Mr. Shipley, I'm terribly sorry I took up so much of your time. By the way, there are great new careers opening up in aviation. I'd look into it if I were you. Oh! Please, you're crushing my corned beef. <laughs> Show people. <laughs> I just picked up a hot flash. I send you out for hot corned beef and you come back with hot flashes. What took you so long? Well, I ran into one of the musicians from the high high and he told me that Farmer Jones just got his notice. What? They fired him? Yeah, he closes tomorrow night. Can you imagine being fired at the high high? It's as low low as you can get. <laughs> was it because of me? No, nah, he was laying a bomb. They had to let him go. How about that? Here I'm ready to knock the guy down with a lawsuit, and the poor fellow's already flat on his back. I feel awful. Why should you feel awful? You had nothing to do with it. I know, but I didn't have to make like district attorney either. Me and my big mouth, I gotta start screaming and hollering just because you used some of my material. That's me. Leap before you look, Williams. Look, Benny. Run over to Lindy's and try to find out where Farmer Jones is stopping. I've got to help straighten this guy out. What about my corned beef sandwich? What corned beef? You're going where the stuff was born. Go ahead. <laughs> Come in. Well, if it isn't the big man himself. How'd you find out where I live, big shot? Look you up in who's who. How else? Well, aren't you going to ask me to sit down? Sure. I'd ask to have some champagne and caviar. But my butler just stepped out. Sit down, Big Shot. Why don't you get off that Big Shot jazz, huh?
I'm sorry, kid. I guess I'm getting to be a hard guy to talk to. Believe me, it's no fun being on the bottom when once you're at the top. Well, who says you can't be back at the top again, Farmer? Oh, no. That luck ran away from me a long time ago. Luck? Why, you stubborn clown, when you were in burlesque, you were the king. Luck had nothing to do with it then. It has nothing to do with it now. You were a king because you were doing knockabout comedy like nobody else could do it. You were doing what you knew how to do. Nobody could do it as well because it was your own material you were doing. Luck. What are you talking about? What do you want to go change your act for? Because I had to eat. You don't think I wanted to change the act? But my type of comedy went out of style. What was I going to do? Starve to death? Don't look now, farmer, but you're back in style again. Yeah. Where have you been? Haven't you noticed? There's a new invention now. Television. Been out for a few years. Doing real good, too. Tune in to variety shows, and what do you see? Bicycle acts, jugglers, acrobats, all the old-timers doing great again. Don't you see, farmer, there's millions of people, a brand new audience, waiting to see that wonderful physical comedy that made burlesque and vaudeville famous. And nobody, nobody on the face of the earth can do knockabout comedy better than you can. Don't you see, farmer? All you need is to, your old routines. That's all. You could get those old routines out. Could I? Of course you could. You don't need my material. Oh. I see. I don't need your material. Of course not. Not my material, anybody else's. Your own. Get those old bits out of the mothballs. We'll polish them up. I could help you. Could you? You bet. You helped me once, I'd be happy to help you. Sure you would. Atta boy. You'd be happy to see me fall flat on my face. What are you talking about? You know, you had me fooled for a minute until I realized that this whole thing was to stop me from doing your material, right? That is the most stupid thing I ever heard in my whole life. All right, I'm stupid, but I'm wise to you. And I'm not gonna let you bum steer me out of my last chance to be a big timer. The club has sold out to convention tonight, and I'm going to have a full house for the first time since I've been here. And I'm going out and knock them dead. You know what with? The restaurant routine. Now, are you going to get out of here, or do I have to call for the manager? I don't mind you throwing me out, farmer. But I hate to see you throw out all those years of hard work and experience that went into making you the greatest knockabout comic that ever lived. see me. What did he say? He didn't say anything. He just won't see me. Well, what do we do now? What do you mean, what do we do? We get out of here. That's what we do. I'm not going to stay here and see that guy destroy himself. Come on, let's get the waiter, pay the check, and scram. Well, you tried. Yeah, I tried. Showtime! No wonder he wouldn't see you. He can't see anything. He's blind drunk. No, he isn't, Benny. Why, that old rascal. Sit down. You're about to see the real Farmer Jones. I'm gonna do that trick that fella did. <laughs> wow. Where am I? I want to dance with you. Get out of
you very much, ladies and gentlemen. As you may know, this is my closing night. Oh, it's not my closing night. Well, that's really exciting news for my landlord. <laughs> and I think it calls for an encore. I wonder if I could get some muscular young man in the audience. He must mean me. <laughs> Sit down. He said muscular young man, not muscular young head. <laughs> you know who he means. Well, who said I haven't got a class act? Look who I got for a stooge. Danny Williams. <laughs> Just like you said, Dan, all you need is luck. Yeah, that's all. Just luck. We'd like to give you a recreation of a famous fight scene between Rocky Marciano and the battling kid. I play Marciano. <laughs> I'll do the battling kid. Okay. <laughs> In slow motion. In slow motion. 